trust. How do you really know if you can trust someone? I mean, it's a very, very important thing and it does cause stress in people's lives. In fact, if we trust someone and they take advantage of us, it can hurt us for our future and being able to trust others. And also, if we're not sure if we can trust somebody, we become control freaks, literally, and drive everyone around us crazy. <laughs> Today, I'm going to give you the four key things that you need to know about someone or something in order for you to trust it. It's going to change the way you think about things forever in the area of trust. This is Zen in a Moment. It's a podcast where you can learn to train your brain to stop stressing forever and be the cool, awesome person you know you can be. I provide tips and strategies that move you from stressed out into in the flow. Flow meaning feeling light, open, and wise. And I'm your host, Zen Cryer DeBrook, stress as guidance expert. All right. So there are four key things that are super important for you to know about a situation or a person. I'm going to talk mainly about people today, but you can use this in situational aspects. You can use this in your professional life. You can use this with your kids. You can use this with your spouse. You can use this with anyone. And here is the deal. In order to trust someone, they have to have four particular things. They need to be reliable, competent, sincere, and have the resources that are necessary, right? So I'm going to break these down for you. Okay, reliability is, do they say what they're going to do and do it, right? Do they show up on time? Are they reliable, right? Or are they flaky? If they're reliable, then you can trust them. If they're not reliable, if they don't show up on time, if they don't do what they say they're going to do, they're not trustworthy, right? And I'm going to explain to you how you can have conversations with those you love in order to build trust with people because you can have this conversation. You can say, honey, you're not reliable. You don't show up on time or you say you're going to do something and then you don't actually do follow through and do it. You, know, you can have this conversation with your kids. You can have this conversation with a coworker or with somebody that you're managing, right? You can talk to them about enhancing and, and increasing their capacity to be reliable. And it's something that they can fix. They can work on. It's a skill. Reliability can often be a skill. It's also a character trait for a lot of people, but for some people it's a skill. They weren't taught how to be reliable. Competency. Do they know how to do what you need them to do, right? Sometimes there's a competency issue. You have a, a nine-year-old kid and they want to do a particular thing and they're not competent. It's not, they're not able to do the thing that they want to do. And you can say, sweetheart, you do not have the ability to do this yet. And then you can begin building competency, right? So let's say your spouse, your spouse wants to fix something around the house and you've seen them tear things apart before and they don't get put back together right, right? And it's a competency issue. It's not a, a you're not being controlling, you're not being weird or awful about it. You're like, hey, 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 you don't, I don't know if you know how to do this, right? And you didn't know how to do these last three things and now they're sitting around unfinished and we need to be able to, you need to know how to do these things before you start a project, right? You can build competency, Competency is really important. Now, if they're reliable and they're competent, both, you can trust them. It's important. Now we'll go on to sincerity, all right? Sincerity is one that you can't fix. Are they sincere? Are they lying? Do they lie? Sincerity shows up as lying. Uh, I didn't get your email, right? Um, it can be, I didn't get your call. I didn't get your text, those kinds of things. It's in, that's a sincerity issue. It's a character flaw. You can't fix sincerity. If you have somebody that's not showing up, that's lying, that says they're going to do something and they actually know they're not, sincerity can also be someone who talks, lies about what somebody else has said or done. Um, they blame others. They, they play victim. A, an insincere person often shows up as a victim. Uh, sincerity is a character flaw. Sin if somebody is insincere and you can't fix that, it's, it's, a, it's a thing where you can't trust them and you often need to get them out of your life. If they're an employee or, or someone where you have control, let's say you have a contractor who's working on your home and, and they give you a bid for a particular amount and then the next thing you know, they need this much money more and then this much money more and, and they keep milking you for that, and making excuses, not showing up. That's a sincerity. You need to get rid of that contractor. And it's very hard to do sometimes because sometimes you're embroiled in a situation with people and you want it to change, but sincerity, I'm telling you right now, is one where you cannot fix it. The last one is resources. Does the person actually have the resources that they need? So for instance, let's say we're going to go with the contractor thing again. You're hiring someone, and it's a big job, and it's just him and his brother, right? And the job is really too, and they're going to do it in two weeks. But you looking at it, the job is really too big to be done by two people in two weeks, 
right? Another situation is maybe you want to you want to have somebody do a business partnership with you, but they don't have any money. They don't ha- they can't bring their resources together enough for them to be able to participate or you want to go on a vacation. Here's another great one. You know, you you have a very reliable, sincere, competent person who wants to, you know, in your family that wants to join you on a vacation and help co-create this great family reunion vacation, but they don't have the money. Right? And so you'll end up paying for them in the end because somebody's got to pay for that house, for that food, for everything that comes up. And even though you've got, they've got all the best intentions, and the reality of it is they just don't have the money. Now, here's the thing, and I'm going to cover this in another podcast as well. But if the person is reliable, competent, sincere, and has the resources necessary, you can trust them. If you're still not trusting them, you're being a control freak, really. And it's, it's you. It's your background of fear and anxiety, and it's causing you to be controlling. And these four things can actually lead you out of your controlling behavior. You can use your internal guidance system to check on all of these four things, right? So if you don't know what your internal guidance system is, go to zeninamoment.com and there I have an exercise that I walk you through, which will allow you to feel for yourself that you have this factory installed, came with you when you were born, internal guidance system that's guiding you and letting you know whether what you're thinking is true or, and, and what you're, you're experiencing as far as your, your thoughts about what's going to happen in the future is accurate and true or not true based on how you feel in the body. And it's an incredibly accurate system. You can go through these things. Let's say, once again, we're going to go with your child. You know, you ask yourself, is, is he reliable? Is he competent? Is he sincere? He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna actually show up and do what he says he's going to do with this paper router, this puppy. <laughs> and he has the resources he needs, right, to, to do this paper route or take care of that puppy. If all of those open you, give you a light, open feeling inside, that means those are all true. You can trust your kid in that situation. You can trust the contractor. You can trust your spouse to take care of the thing. You can trust your coworker. If you are still having issues letting go, it's you. You're the one that needs to take the inner check. You're the being the inner control freak. I'll cover that on my inner control freak podcast because it's one of the highly stressed out, painful things that, that we often do is over control our environment in order to feel safe. It's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a neurotic edge that we get when we're in a, living in a fear-based experience. And I'll handle that later. But the main thing I want you to know is, is how to know when you can trust someone or not. You have these four criteria. You have your internal guidance system that can give you the openings. If you close, if you feel a tight anxiety feeling when you think of them being reliable or competent or sincere or having the resources, that means they're not. They're not able. You're not able to trust them. You have a really good reason. Three of them you can fix. Reliability, competency, and resources. You can always fix or have a conversation around so that they understand why you're saying no or why you're saying you're not able to trust them. Sincerity, there's nothing you can do. You can't fix that. Even if you tried, you wouldn't know if they're sincerely getting that you need them to be sincere. All right, so this is Zen in a Moment, the podcast that helps you be in the flow, feeling light, open, and wise. I want to hear your comments. Tell me some of the things that you have had in your life that has led you to not trust people. Is this helpful to be able to have the four particular things to guide you through being able to build trust again in your life, giving you specific concrete ways to trust. I want to hear in your comments what you think about trust and trusting people. And please share, share, share this podcast. It's so important to me. Put it out on Twitter, on Facebook, share it with your friends, forward the email that you're getting. Please share the page with them. Sign up on our, on our webpage so you can get the podcast brought into your inbox if you'd like, if you're not on our mailing list. And then you'll also get special offers. We do, I do special Q and a calls that answer your questions around the internal guidance system so that you can actually deepen your experience of this beautiful, extraordinary part of yourself. Thank you so much for listening. And until we have an opportunity for you to be here on this podcast again, remember as always, I'm sending you love and blessings. <laughs>